There's so many Grounded Discord suggestions. If you have a suggestion for Grounded, you should post it in the Grounded Discord. That's where the community can upvote on them. But there are so many Grounded Discord suggestions. There's mobility suggestions. There's exciting Grounded suggestions. There's extra fun Grounded suggestions. There's great Grounded suggestions. There's building Grounded suggestions. There's creatures. There's options. There's upgrades. There's user interface. It's so many. It's so many. It's too overwhelming. There's too many to read. What up? It's Tiny Power Gaming, and in this video, I'll be covering 10 great Grounded Discord suggestions that I came across while reading through the Grounded Discord Suggestions channel. And if you have a suggestion for Grounded, as I mentioned before, you should post it in the Grounded Discord, so get on over there and join it. But without further ado, let's get into this list. Number 10. Being able to actually sit in the chairs or lay on the bed and rest for a two to three hour period. They already added sitting in the chairs. The animations, at least, you can now sit in the chairs, in grounded, update 0.10.0, the Shroom and Doom update. If you're in the public test server, you can do it right now. Otherwise, you just gotta wait a few more days for June 30th when the Shroom and Doom update goes officially live for everyone. Now, the only part of the suggestion that they didn't add was laying in beds and resting. Some people wanna be able to rest for certain amounts of time. Let's say you wanna go to sleep uh, because it's getting dark. And you don't you don't want to you know sit there and wait the whole time. So you should be able to sit in a chair, sort of like what Fallout does. In Fallout, you can sit in a chair and you can set it to sit there for like two or three hours, and it'll be a time skip within the game, allowing you to advance the day forward for a few hours for whatever reason. Maybe you're trying to hunt fireflies and it's daytime, but you want it to be nighttime. Sit in a chair, wait till nighttime. Boom! Now it's night and you can go out and you can hunt your fireflies. And in case you're wondering, the fireflies are still getting stuck in the hedge. And if you really wanna look for them, they're over by the sandbox edge near the side of the porch. Here's a little tip and trick for you, but let's move on to the next one. Number nine. A quote unquote pin recipe option in the crafting menu that will let you pin a recipe to your screen while wandering around the backyard. It would be nice to know exactly what you need to craft this or that. A shopping list sign. You can allocate like eight different resources to remind you and your group of what you need to gather. The chopping list is great, but only applies to construction. A way to take the recipe and pop it up on the screen so you can remember what you need to collect to make things. So all of these suggestions from many different people are all saying the same thing. They want recipe pins. They want to be able to pin the recipe for whatever they happen to be gathering resources for up on the screen so they know exactly what to gather while they're out exploring the backyard. And I think that's a really great idea. Henceforth, is why it's in the 10 Great Grounded Discord Suggestions video. And if you're enjoying this video, you could do me a huge favor and smash that like button, I'd really appreciate it. But let's get on to the next number. Number eight. Add the ability to pinpoint something on the map so you can easily tell other players where to go or regroup without having to explain it. These are multiplayer waypoints. They want multiplayer waypoints so that they're not permanent field markers but they're just waypoints that your friends can see when you're trying to play with a new friend who's just playing Grounded for the first time, and you're trying to explain to them where things are in the backyard. Since there's no mini-map and there's no compass, uh, it's hard to explain to a player who doesn't know the layout of the landmarks in the backyard where things are. So a multiplayer waypoint is, I believe, what is being suggested here. This is a multiplayer waypoint that will, you know, just a pinpoint that goes on. You don't have to build a field marker. It's not a permanent part of the map. It's just a marker that your friends can see when they're exploring the backyard with you. Number seven. Armor that makes you immune to poison. Make a mutation that negates wolf spider prison. Don't you mean poison? So it would be cool to be able to craft a poison antidote to stop poison damage from lasting too long. In regards to the armor that's immune to poison, perhaps it would be more balanced to have each armor piece reduce poison damage by something like 20%. Wearing the full armor set could possibly give a total of 60% reduction in poison damage. I would like to see a mutation that reduces poison damage after you have been poisoned a certain amount of times. 15, 45, 90. Kind of like how your body actually builds an immunity to poisons in real life. 
and again with update 0.10.0 the shroom and doom update another suggestion that was already planned to be in the suggestions video has been added into the game and that is an anti-venom perk the anti-venom perk of mirth mirth that mirth that ism i think i said it right i don't know if i'm pronouncing it wrong let me know in the comments say tpg that's not how you pronounce that um but that's how i pronounce it mirth mirth and it is a perk that allows you to withstand poison. It makes you uh, immune to poison. And it's really awesome and it's really fun. And it really helps out when you want to go out and you want to bash some wolf spiders. It's really an effective perk. And if you're wondering how you get it, you just got to go around and bash wolf spiders. If you bash enough wolf spiders, you'll get mithridatism. And then you'll be immune to poison too. Number six. What about bomb arrows made with splat burst and arrows? Can there be a crafting recipe for flaming arrows? Add a new arrow called tracking arrows that are made from three thistle needles, three mite fuzz, and two acid glands. They make a trail when they walk slash run away. Or two stick stink bug gas sack. They lead you because you see the trail of gas and this would make three arrows. Zipline arrows, self-explanatory to be honest, but allows you to traverse gaps or descend to a lower elevation quickly. And as you can see, there's a lot of suggestions for new, improved arrow types. Now, I, for one, would like to see a lot of cool arrow types. That would be really fun. The one in particular on this list that I think would be most relevant and be applicable to the game mechanics of Grounded would probably be the fire arrow. I know a number of people have mentioned fire arrows to me before that they think that would be really cool in the game. And I know that the game director is a big fan of The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and, and a lot of arrow types in that. One of them being the fire arrow is useful not only as a battle mechanic, but also as a puzzle game uh, solving mechanic. You can use it to light things on fire, to open up new passageways, things like that. So a fire arrow is definitely something that I think could be incorporated into Grounded. Whether or not it will be is yet to be seen. Number five. I think it would be cool to add a praying mantis boss or mini boss into the game. Maybe it would drop mantis parts which could be used to make armor that increases attack speed. Praying mantis insect. Attacks with its arms and when you kill it, you can make twin daggers or a sword out of its arms. More boss fights that could be more co-op oriented. And some more arthropods. I thought would make the backyard more dangerous were centipedes, dragonflies, and maybe a moth. A Praying Mantis mini boss is very popular. It's something that's been talked about since the very beginning of this game. I've heard it from so many players and read about it in so many different forums that a Praying Mantis mini boss, or in my opinion, just biome bosses in general, some sort of exclusive large insect that's even more dangerous than a wolf spider, but is exclusive and exists within each biome, would be something really fun that a player could encounter while they're out exploring in the backyard. If you think that would be really cool, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a Praying Mantis mini boss. Just for my own personal research, I want to see how many grounded gamers, how many grounded players would like to see the Praying Mantis mini boss. And if you want to see it, go to the grounded Discord and vote these suggestions up. If you like any of these suggestions that I've mentioned here in this video, or I'm about to mention future, join the grounded Discord and vote them up, and the game director and the game development team will actually take a look at them depending on how many votes they get. Number four. Make a dye station to make dyes to color your armor. Maybe make it so the flower petals stay their specific color and use them to make different dye colors. In addition to the above suggestion, the dye station can make any color dye from any material. I'd love a way to dye walls and construction. A coloring system for the armor would be quite nice. Of course people want customization. People want to be able to customize their builds and their armors and their characters to make them feel unique to each individual player. And I think it would really make the game more exciting to visit and see new players' backyards to see what they've done with their coloring schemes and all of that. So I agree, a dye station, I think, is a great suggestion for Grounded. Although, we gotta iron out, I think, within the game code, the mechanics before we worry about cosmetics but when we do get to the cosmetic phase, I would like to see something like this, or maybe just adding something like this to enhance the gameplay right now would boost uh, enjoyability within Grounded, I'm not sure, but this is something I know has been suggested by a lot of people in the Grounded Discord suggestions, and if you like these suggestions, go up, vote them. Go up, vote them, that's all you gotta do. Number three. The ability to dig and make underground bases along with a ladder. 
There already is a ladder. They already added the ladder into the game. Although the ladder was a suggestion from the community that did get added into the game. So if you have suggestions, maybe you should drop one in the ground to Discord. Add some sort of terrain editor, maybe to use the shovel in some way to make some new tool, nothing major, but like moving a few lumps of dirt, or also add the ability to have a small wheelbarrow to haul the dirt and mud around in. Alright, so those suggestions weren't that big, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say yes, terrain manipulator digging aspect just like Minecraft. I've been saying since day one, this game, Grounded, gives off a very strong Minecraft vibe, okay? The, the Minecraft vibe is strong with this game, and I think it would be wise for Xbox Studios and for Obsidian Entertainment to fully play in to the Minecraft vibe that this game gives off, not only through its building, but through its exploration. I would like to see the game really focus on saying, okay, if we're gonna try to make our game really go in some direction, we should use Minecraft as the blueprint for what we can do with Grounded. And what makes Minecraft so cool? Well, it's digging underground and uncovering those secret underground tunnels and caves that are full of baddies. So imagine you're doing that and you dig into some cave that's filled with all sorts of crazy resources. You uncover some forgotten ant cave that's filled with mints or something like that. I think playing into this aspect of terrain digging, whether you go with the, like a terrain manipulator aspect sort of like No Man's Sky does, or whether you go with just a straight up digging using the shovel mechanic that already exists in the game and go the Minecraft route, I think this would really make the game go to a whole nother level, although I understand that getting that to work within the game mechanics would be quite a feat, so that might be something for the far distant future of Grounded and not necessarily right away, but I think it's a great suggestion, and if you think it's a great suggestion, well then head over to the Grounded Discord and smash the upvote button. I really appreciate it. Number two. Slingshots. Further develop on the idea. Existing in-game items could be given an extra purpose as ammo, like pebblets, or quartzite, or acorn bits, or brat burst bombs. I could give or take on them slingshot. To be honest with everyone, I could give or take it. It's not that big a deal. I don't honestly think it's that great a suggestion. It's just a little neat little item that I think would make it fun, especially the way they explained it using the already existing items as ammo. I think it would just make it fun since the throwing mechanic is already really fun to work with. I think the slingshot would be really cool too, but just pay attention to this one. Just remember, remember the slingshot suggestion for the future. Number one. When seasons are added and grounded, more creatures or bugs should migrate, and the bugs should become stronger depending on the seasons. Y'all ever think about adding rain into the game? <laughs> seasons and weather. Seasons and weather, these aren't the only suggestions that mention seasons and weather. These are just some of them. There are a lot of suggestions for seasons and weather, and I think seasons and weather would be really cool, especially if you incorporated sort of backyard changes or significant events that came with seasonal weather patterns such as certain building types might not work so well in certain conditions, maybe prompting a higher tier or higher level, meaning that your starter bases are made of weak materials that you eventually want to upgrade as you progress through the game and unlock more fortified structures that will allow you to build more permanent bases that won't get washed away by weather or seasonal effects. I think something like that being incorporated into the game mechanic would add to the immersiveness and make the game a lot more fun. But that's pretty much it. Those are 10 great Grounded Discord suggestions that I discovered while reading through the Grounded Discord. If you're interested in adding your own discussions or your own suggestions into the discussion and you want to go upvote some of these suggestions for yourself, well, you can join the Grounded Discord. Check out the Grounded website. I have a link to it down in the description below. It will give you a link there to join the Grounded Discord and you can go upvote some of these suggestions or maybe incorporate some of your own. And you never know, they might end up actually being included into the game just like the latter suggestion was that was in, that was a, initially came from the community. So if you're a Grounded Gamer, you should really join the Grounded Discord. And you should also do me a huge favor and smash that like button on this video. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more exciting Grounded-related, Grounded-themed content here on Tiny Power Gaming in the future, well, I hope this video earned your subscription today. And if it did, don't forget to ring that little bell so you can become part of the hashtag Tiny Crew and always be notified whenever I upload a new video here on Tiny Power Gaming. I also live stream over on Twitch, so if you want to come hang out with me or anyone else in the hashtag tiny crew, 
Well, you can find us over on Twitch, so smash my follow button over there so you'll be notified whenever I go live. And to keep up with all things Tiny Pirate Gaming, all channel news, you can follow me over on Twitter or join the Tiny Pirate Gaming Discord, and you'll be abreast of all things, you know, Tiny Pirate Gaming, all things TPG. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and until next time... Arg, matey, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.